Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'll be doing it on Cameron's Law Secondary Checkpoint for Science Paper 1, April 2023. You may use a calculator. Let's start. Question 1. This question is about the human excrete B or renal system. A. Complete the sentences about the structure and function of the excretory or renal system. The excrete B system filters blood. Blood enters, the dash where it is filtered, and urine is formed. This is the kidneys. This urine passes along a tube called a dash, the ureters, towards the bladder. The urine is stored in the bladder. Urine is released from the body through a different tube called the urethra. Straightforward fill in the blanks, that's our answer. B. The table shows the percentage concentration of four substances in blood plasma and urine. Which substance has the greatest increase in urine compared to blood plasma? Choose from the list. Ammonia, protein, salt, or urea. Well, let's see the increase for each substance. This is 0.05. Protein is actually minus 9. Salt is plus 0 0.30. But then urea is plus 1.97. So this is the highest increase. That's our answer. Let's go to question two. Ico calculates the density of some objects. A, a block of iron has a mass of 19.68 grams. The volume of the block is 2.5 centimeters cubed. One, write down the equation I created to calculate density. Density is equal to mass by volume. This is a fundamental equation and you have to remember this so that you can do this problem. Part two, calculate the density of Ico's block of iron. Well, the density is simply mass by volume, which is 19.68 divided by 2.50. Let's get our calculator out. 19.68 divided by 2.5, 7.87. Grams per centimeter cubed. Let me just rewrite this. 7.872, yeah. So that's our answer. Now let's go to part B. Ico calculates the density of four objects. Look at the results. Which object is a gas? Circle the correct answer and explain your answer. Well, we can see that gases always have a low density, extremely low. And in this case, C has an extremely low density, 0 0.002. Compared to the others, it's very low. And considering that water's density is one gram per centimeter cube, this is extremely low. So of course the answer is C because gases have extremely low densities. This is simply because their mass is extremely small and they can expand to a very large volume so of course mass by volume will be a tiny number let's go to question three look at the diagram of a vacuum flask Gabriella puts hot liquid into the vacuum flask the flask keeps the hot liquid warm a which material is most suitable to make the stopper which is over here so look look correct answer well the main thing which is required is that the stopper has to be unreactive and should not conduct thermal energy. So because it should not conduct thermal energy, it cannot be these metals. So it's either gold or plastic. But well, since they asked which material is most suitable to make the stopper, of course it can't be gold because gold is uh, too expensive. So of course it's plastic. B, one, suggest how the shiny silver surfaces help to keep the liquid warm. Shiny silver surfaces actually reflect radiation so the radiation of heat coming from the hot liquid will deflect back into the vacuum flask or will deflect back into the hot liquid so that's our answer the shiny surface or shiny silver surface reflects heat back into the container Part two, the vacuum does not contain any particles. Explain why the vacuum reduces the transfer of thermal energy. 
Well, the vacuum releases the transfer of thermal energy because in a vacuum, only radiation can happen. I have the three ways to transfer thermal energy, which are conduction, convection, and the mentioned radiation. Conduction and convection require a medium, but radiation does not. So vacuum denies the transfer of thermal energy by conduction or convection. Since there is no medium for these processes to occur. That's our answer. Let's go to part C. Gabriella removes the lid and the stopper from the vacuum flask. Some of the liquid evaporates. What happens to the temperature of the liquid that remains in the vacuum flask? Explain why use ideas about particles. Well, the temperature of the liquid actually decreases. Why? Because the hot liquid which evaporates has the highest thermal energy. And because it has the highest thermal energy, it has the highest kinetic energy. And as it gains enough kinetic energy, it can escape as a gas and evaporate. But then the particles which are left behind of the liquid have less thermal energy. That's why they do not evaporate. So the remaining particles will have low thermal energy and the temperature decreases. This is the process of cooling by evaporation. So we can say that the temperature of the remaining liquid decreases. This is because the particles with most kinetic energy, most kinetic and thermal energy actually, evaporate, but those with less thermal and kinetic energy stay behind as a liquid. Because there's less thermal energy, of course, there'll be lower temperature. That's our answer. Let's go to question four. Question four. The Earth's crust is made of a number of large pieces. A. What is the name given to these large pieces of the Earth's crust? Circle the correct answer. Well, the answer is tectonic plates. This is literally the definition of tectonic plates. B. Look at the map showing the positions of earthquakes around the world in 2021. All the small dots represent earthquakes. Suggest how the position of earthquakes provides evidence for a large piece of crust. We know that earthquakes occur at the edges of the plate boundaries. So along this region, for example, this is the tectonic plate boundary and therefore this is where the earthquakes are happening most for that plate. So you can say that earthquakes occur most frequently near tectonic plate. Boundaries. That's how I answer. Let's go to part C. Look at the two maps showing the jigsaw appearance of the continental coast. One was meant by the jigsaw appearance of the continental coast. Well, the jigsaw appearance is exactly what it means, literally. The pieces of the continental coast. fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle.
This is literally what it means, and that's our answer. Go to part two. The continents have moved since 3,000 million years ago. Explain how the continents move. Well, the first thing is that the mantle is heavily involved in the movement of the crust. So there's a lot of magma in the mantle, and this movement causes a convection current. So convection current in the magma of the mantle causes the crust above it to move along with the mantle or along with the magma. That's our answer. Let's go to question 5. The diagram shows a model of a hydrogen molecule. The X's are electrons and the H is the name of hydrogen. A. Name the type of bonding in a hydrogen molecule. Explain how you can tell from the diagram. Well, the type of bonding is of course going to be covalent bonding. And how you can tell from the diagram is that the electrons are shared by both atoms. B. Look at the diagram showing a chlorine atom and a chloride ion. Describe how a chloride ion is made from a chlorine atom. But we can see that all the X's are chlorine's own electrons. But then the chloride ion has one more electron, which is dot, and it gets from another atom. So, chlorine gains an electron to form chloride ion. C. Sodium chloride, NaCl, is made of sodium ions, Na+, and chloride ions, Cl-. Explain how the ions in sodium chloride are held together. Well, we know that sodium has positive charge and chlorine has a negative charge. So the ions in sodium chloride are held together by the electrostatic forces of attraction between these two ions. So, electrostatic forces of attraction between the Na plus and Cl minus ions. That's our answer. Let's go to question 6. This is a question about photosynthesis and plant minerals. A. Look at the diagrams of different plant cells. Which two diagrams show plant cells that photosynthesize? Choose from A, B, C, D, and E. A, C, and E do not have any chlorophyll, do not have any green, green pigment, and do not have chloroplasts. But then cell B and cell D, or palisade cells and guard cells, they have chloroplasts. These small lobs here have a green pigment, which is chlorophyll. Therefore, they can photosynthesize. So B and D are the answers. Now let's go to question part B. Carlos investigates the effect of magnesium on plant growth, makes a hypothesis about the effect of magnesium on plant growth. He uses the equipment in the diagram. In his first experiment, Carlos fills a beaker with a solution containing all the minerals in it for healthy growth, assembles the equipment and seedling as shown in the diagram, records the appearance of the seedling after four weeks. Carlos repeats the experiment. In his second experiment, he uses a solution that contains all the minerals in it for healthy growth except magnesium. 1. Carlos makes a hypothesis about the effect of magnesium on plant growth. So this is a suitable hypothesis. Well, we know that magnesium helps in producing chlorophyll. And if there is a lack of magnesium, of course, the plant cannot photosynthesize and it won't grow. Or at least maybe it will grow by respiration, but then its leaves will not be green. Either it will be yellow color or some color around there. So the effect of magnesium on plant growth the suitable hypothesis could be magnesium is required for healthy growth of the plant. That's our answer. Now let's go to part two. In his first experiment, Carlos uses a solution with all the minerals needed for healthy growth. Explain why this is important. Well, if we just do the experiment without magnesium, as given here, what would we compare it to? This 
is what we compare it to. So we know how a plant goes with all minerals required present. So if one of them is not present, then how will the plant go? That is our experiment here. So it acts as a control variable. And we can compare any results with this result. Part C. Carlos draws a diagram to show the appearance of a plant from the first experiment after four weeks. Let me remind you that the first experiment is the one with all minerals needed for healthy growth. And the healthy green leaves are shown sealing in the first experiment after four weeks. Carlos repeats the experiment again. In his third experiment, he uses a solution that contains all the minerals needed for healthy growth except nitrates. Predict the appearance of the seedling left in the solution without nitrates after four weeks. Give a reason for your answer. Well, the appearance of the seedling is obviously going to be that the plant grows less or grows shorter than the first experiment. And the reason is simply going to be that nitrates are required to produce protein. Which stimulates growth. That's our answer. D. Which substances may insert chloroplasts? So what is the product of photosynthesis? Glucose. You can also write carbohydrates since that's basically glucose is a carbohydrate. And oxygen is also accepted. That's our answer.